Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at how to create the illusion of stained glass artwork in Photoshop. So this Geisha Sketch JPEG is one that you will find in your Unit 2 folder either on Schoology or on the X drive. Let's take a moment to go Shift Command S and save it with our last name at the front of it. Underscore, good. You can save it as your Photoshop document as well under Format and click Save. So now we still have our original document saved to our desktop as well, as well as now our Photoshop document. Wonderful. All right, so to start, whenever we are working with an original image, it's always a good idea to simply duplicate the background layer so we can always go back to our original starting point. So begin by clicking the lock to unlock the layer and then hitting Command J to duplicate the layer. And we're going to rename this duplicate layer one. Wonderful. And then we can rename this one background. Remember to hit enter to set the new name. Now the first thing that we are going to do is create a border for this work of art. So what I've done here is I have made my rulers visible, which will be helpful in drawing our straight lines. So you can go to view and just make sure that rulers is checked off. That's when they're gone. And that's when they're there. Now we're going to use the brush tool to do this. And what I'd like you to make sure is that the brush itself is at maximum hardness because we want a crisp line, not a fuzzy one. And the size can be quite small. Six points seem to work well. So let's zoom out here, command minus sign, all right. So what we want to do is we want to close off the open areas. So this entire bottom of the picture is open. And what you will do with your foreground color set to black is you are going to set your brush right on top of where the edge of the image is. You're going to click and hold your mouse. You are then going to hold shift, and with both shift and your mouse held, you can now, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have my layer selected. There we go, layer one. Let's try that again. Click with your mouse and hold, now hold shift, and now we see that a perfectly straight line has been created. And now if we take a look at where our mouse is hovering on top of the line. You can see a dotted line way over to the left on the ruler and see kind of where it's landing. So we can see that our image, we can try to make the equal distance for the top line as well. Just take a guess and again, click your mouse, click shift and you can draw a straight line right across. Same thing for over here, line it up, click and hold your mouse and then hold shift, straight line, don't let go, and one more time over here, click your mouse, hold it while holding shift, and there we are. Good, so now we have a nice border. All right, so now what we want to pay attention to is that we're going to be filling in closed spaces with different colors and different effects. So it's very important that all areas are properly closed off. So we can see here that there are no gaps between the line that we just drew and the original design. And I'm going to give you guys a heads up that there is one space on this work of art that is not closed and it's found right within the fan here. So if we zoom in real close, we see that this is open, which would cause a problem. If I wanted to select just this section of the fan, it would select both. I can show you that with the magic wand here. You can see that it wraps itself around this entire area because remember that magic wand recognizes colors. So Command D to deselect. Let's use our paintbrush tool and black just to close up this area. And there we go, wonderful. All right, now, Let's say we want to color the fan first. So go over to your layers panel, make sure that layer one is selected, your top layer. Use your magic wand. Remember the shortcut is W and you are going to select every other panel 
of the fan. So I'm going to click this first one, then I'm going to hold shift. You can see a little plus sign appearing. I'll be clicking every other panel of the fan. Good, wonderful. Now with those selected, we're going to go to create a new layer. And right away, we're going to add a layer mask. And what you'll see now is that a mask has been created based off of just that selection. So if I were to hold Alt and click on the layer mask, we can see that only the areas that we selected with the magic wand are actually showing through right now. Because remember that black hides the layer and white reveals it. I'm going to hold Alt again just to restore it. Good. All right. Now the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to have our new layer. I'm going to rename it Fan. We're going to have the actual layer itself selected, not the mask, but the layer itself. With the layer selected, you're going to go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. So what we're doing in this part is we're going to be adding a bunch of filters to make it look like stained glass, and Clouds is the first step. And when you do that, you're going to want to make sure that your foreground and mid ground, sorry, foreground and background colors are set to black and white. That is very important. So make sure that over here it's set to black and white. Our next step, we've added clouds. We are now going to go to filter. You're going to go to filter gallery. And then underneath the drop box for distort, you're going to find glass. And here you can see the glass texture that's going to be created on top of the cloud filter that we've already added. You can play around with distortion to see the type of texture that you want with the glass, play around with the smoothness of it. I enjoy the crisp edges and you can play around with the scale as well. And once you're happy, you can click OK and watch the fans as it's applied. Now we already have a glass texture. So all that's left now is to add a color and we're going to make a new layer for this. So go to your layers panel, click that new layer icon. And then with your paint bucket tool, remember that the shortcut is G. We're going to select with our color picker, double click your foreground square and choose the color that you want the blades of the fan to be. I'm going to go with a nice bright green. I'm going to click OK. And then with layer two selected, you are simply going to click anywhere on the image to dump the paint. All right, now don't be alarmed that it is all that one color. That's all part of the process right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to link this green color so that it only affects this layer directly below it. And to do that, you're going to hover between layer two and your fan layer, and you're going to hold down the Alt key. And you're going to see, once you hover over the right spot, this icon appear, and this is to link the two layers. So while holding Alt, you're going to click, and now we see that the fan blades are green, but now we can't see the texture and we're going to let the texture show through by changing our blending mode. So with your color layer selected, go to your blending mode where it says normal and try out any of the different blending modes. My personal favorite is overlay. I find that it lets the texture through most effectively, but you are welcome to try any of the other ones that you would like to get an effect that is most desirable for you. You can also play around with opacity if you want to dull the colors a bit. And that is how you create the stained glass effect. So now what you will be doing for the rest of this demo is repeating those steps. You'll go back to layer one. You will use your magic wand to select the different blades. You will create a new layer, you'll add a mask, you will create on the layer the filter effect again, render, oh now watch this. So if I create clouds right now, it's going to give me green clouds because that's what my foreground and background is set to. But I don't think that I want it to be green again for the alternating blades, so I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. I'm going to set it back to my default colors, which is just the letter D, if you'd like to do that quickly. You can go to Filter, Render, Clouds, there we go, Filter, Filter, Gallery, and let's add glass again. 
and each panel of stained glass in real life is always different, so play around with the textures to get something that you like. Click OK. Make another layer. Decide what you want your color to be for this one. Maybe I'll do a deeper green this time. Use your paint bucket. Fill in the space. Hold down Alt to link the layers. And play around with the blending mode again. Good, wonderful. So you repeat that until the entire image is filled with vivid color. Have fun.